In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to calculate compound interest and also how to solve for the initial amount of an exponential relationship. Before we do those two sections, let me remind you about the general equation of any exponential relationship. If we have an exponential decay or growth relationship, the equation can always be modeled with y equals a times b to the power of x. This is an exponential relationship because x, the independent variable, is in the exponent. And also let me remind you what all four of those parameters stand for in this type of relationship. A, we usually use for the initial amount. B is our growth or decay factor, depending on its value. It's a growth factor if B is greater than one. It's a decay factor if it's between zero and one. Y is the future amount. And X is the number of growth or decay periods which basically means it's how many times the initial amount is going to be multiplied by the base of the power. And you can always calculate that by doing the total amount of time divided by the time of one growth or decay period. So let's actually start this lesson by doing some questions where we have to solve for the initial amount, the A value, of the exponential relationship. Example one says you're going to ship some U239, I believe that's uranium, which has a half-life of two years. That means it repeatedly gets cut in half every two years. There must be 500 grams upon arrival. If shipping will take four months, how much should you package initially? So based on the last sentence, I can tell we are solving for the initial value. We want to know how much should we initially package so that we end up with 500 grams upon arrival. Let me jot down the four parameters that we have in an exponential relationship, y, a, b, and x. We know in this question, we don't know the initial amount. That's what we're solving for. We do know the future amount is 500, that's what we want. This is a half-life question, so the amount of uranium is repeatedly being cut in half, so the base of our power is a half. And x is the number of half-life periods, and we can calculate that by doing the total amount of time, which I see is four months, and I need to divide that by the time of one half-life period, and it tells me that is two years. I need my units of time to be consistent, so let's make sure we think of two years as 24 months. So when I calculate x, I do the total amount of time, four months, divided by the time of one half-life period, which is 24 months. And this fraction will reduce to one over six, and that's going to be the exponent on my exponential relationship. Let me write the relationship, y equals a times b to the x, and sub in for what we know. We want y to be 500, we don't know a, we know b is a half, and we know the exponent is 1 over 6. When solving for the initial value, it's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is isolate a by dividing both sides of this equation by the power, a half to the exponent of 1 over 6. We do that so that on the right side of the equation, that power of a half cancels out, and we know a is equal to the quotient I see on the left side of this equation. I can get an approximate value for that quotient using a calculator. And I get about 561.23 grams of uranium. That's how much must be packaged so that in four months, there will be 500 grams remaining. Let's try example two. We've been hired by a surgeon to grow a skin graft. It takes three days for the amount of skin to double. If we need two kilograms of skin in one week, how much should we start with? So notice once again, we're trying to solve for what we should start with, the initial amount. Let me jot down the four parameters on the side, y, a, b, and x. a is what we don't know, the initial amount. We know the future amount, we want it to be two kilograms. The base of the power is what the initial amount is repeatedly being multiplied by. And it says we know how often the amount of skin doubles, so the base of the power is going to be two. And how often does the skin double? It doubles once every three days. So x would be the total time divided by 3, and we know the total time. It says we need the 2 kilograms of skin in one week, that's 7 days. So my exponent is 7 over 3. If I write the equation of this relationship in the form y equals a times b to the x, I have 2 equals a times 2 to the power of 7 thirds. Isolate a by dividing both sides of this equation by that power of 2. On the right, those powers of 2 cancels out. And we know that a is equal to 2 divided by 2 to the 7 thirds. We could use exponent rules to simplify that. That power of 2 in the numerator 
It's a 2 to the 1, which I can think of as 3 over 3 as the exponent. When dividing powers of the same base, you subtract the exponents. So it would be 2 to the negative 4 thirds, which I could rewrite as 1 over 2 to the power of positive 4 thirds. That's the exact value of a. Let's get the approximate value of a using a calculator. I get about 0 0.4 kilograms. That's what we have to start with. So that in one week, there's two kilograms of skin. Let's now move on to the compound interest section of this lesson. If we're calculating compound interest, we can follow the formula A is equal to the principal amount, P, times 1 plus the interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods in a year all to the power of the number of compounding periods in a year multiplied by the number of years. Let me jot down, I mentioned to you what all those variables stood for while I wrote the equation. Let me write them down on the side as well. A is our future amount. P is our principal amount, which just means the initial amount, the amount that's invested. I is the interest rate, and the interest rate has to be given as a decimal. So if you're told it as a percentage, just divide it by 100 to get the decimal value. N is the number of times interest is compounded each year. And T is just the number of years. All right, let's try a couple examples to see how we use this equation. Example three says, you just passed go and you received $200. You decide to invest it for four years in an account that pays 5% annual interest. How much will you have after 10 years if the interest is compounded annually, semi-annually, and monthly? We'll start with annually. That's the easiest one to do. So our formula, A equals the principal amount, one plus, the interest rate divided by the number of times the interest is going to be compounded per year to the exponent of n times the number of years. What do we know in this question? We don't know the future amount, but we do know the principal amount. You invest $200, that's the principal amount, times one plus the interest rate is 5% per year. So as a decimal, if we divide five by 100, that's 0.05. We divide that by how many times is the interest going to be compounded per year? Well, it says it's just compounded annually. That just means once a year. So you're just going to get that 5% once at the end of the year. To the exponent of the number of compounding periods per year, which was one, times the number of years, which is four years. So what does this equation mean? Let me just simplify it a little bit for you. We've got 200 times 1.05 to the four. That just means that $200 is going to get 5% interest four times. After it gets the 5% interest once, you're going to be up to $210. And then the next amount of interest you get, the next time you get 5% interest, it's on top of the $210. So you start accumulating interest on top of interest. And you'll end up with, after four years, $243.10. What if we compound the interest semi-annually? So instead of getting the 5% once a year, let's see what happens if we compound that 5% semi-annually, meaning twice a year. In our formula, it would still be 200 times one plus 0 0.05, but the number of compounding periods per year is now two to the power of two times four. So what happens is if we simplify inside the brackets, half of 0 0.05 is 0 0.025, if I add that to one, I get 1.025 to the exponent of eight. So if I compare what I have here, that power to this power, notice the difference. When it's compounded annually, we get 5% interest four times. When it's compounded semi-annually, we get two and a half percent interest eight times. So we get half the amount of interest, but twice the amount of times. What ends up happening when we do that, if we get our answer, you notice it's going to be higher than the answer that we got when we compounded it just once a year. It's going to be higher than 243. What do we get? It becomes $243.68. Why is it a bigger number? Well, because even though we're, it seems like we're getting the same amount of interest, right? Instead of getting 5% four times, we're getting two and a half, eight times. Every time you get interest added, so getting interest on top of interest starts to earn you slightly more money. So the more often that the interest is compounded, 
the higher the value is going to get. Let's see what would happen if we compounded the interest monthly. The future amount would equal the initial amount, 200, times 1 plus, well monthly means 12 times a year. So we're going to have to divide the 0 0.05, the 5% interest, by 12 to the exponent of 12 times the number of years, 4. And let me just simplify the exponent to 48. So we're getting interest 48 times. Now each time you get the interest, it's only a 12th of 5%. So it's less interest each time, but because you're getting it more times, you're getting more interest on top of interest, which is going to net you a larger amount of money. This time the total is $244.18. Now because the initial amount that we invested was so small, 200, it doesn't look like the more frequent compounding is resulting in much more money, but the higher the initial investment, the higher the difference is going to be between these values. Let's do one last example. Example four says you are about to go to university. When you are done in four years, you wanna buy a new car. The one you are looking at costs $16,000. If you can find an investment that pays 10.9% interest per year, compounded annually, how much should you invest now? I see this is a compound interest question, so let me write my formula. And now let me sub in what I know. I actually know the future amount this time. I want the future amount to be 16,000. I wanna have that much in four years. So my future amount is 16,000. I'm wondering what should I invest now? What should my principal amount be? I know the interest rate is 10.9%. If I divide that by 100, I get 0 0.109. It's going to be compounded annually. So the number of compoundings per year is just one to the exponent of one times the number of years, which is four. Let me simplify the right side of this equation a little bit. Basically, I want to know what should I invest, what should my principal amount be, so that when I get the 10.9% interest four times, my investment is up to $16,000. We learned earlier in this lesson that if we want to solve for the initial amount, I can isolate that P just by dividing both sides of this equation by that power, 1.109 to the power of 4. I do that so that on the right side of the equation, the P is now isolated, and I can get an approximate value by typing this on my calculator. I get $10,577.76. That's how much you should invest now so that in four years, you have $16,000. That's it for this lesson. Hopefully you now understand how compound interest works, and you know how to solve for the initial value of a exponential relationship. Jensen, man.